You have to get the code into the computer. Now it turns out there are a lot of different ways of getting your code into a computer. And there are also many different opinions as to which way is best. Here's my guide to Python text editors and IDEs. You know what, you can probably use just about any text editor to write your code and it should work. Don't use a word processor though, that won't go so well. But anything like Notepad would do the job, it would be adequate. Adequate, but not perfect. To do a better job, you need something called a code editor. And a code editor is designed specifically, as you can probably guess from the name, for writing code. And it has certain features and functions built in that are just going to make your life a little bit easier. So syntax highlighting is really useful. You've probably already seen that somewhere. Uh, autocomplete and indentation. It's all taken care of for you automatically, which is just helpful. It gives you fewer things to worry about. There are loads of different code editors and they're quite a personal thing. Most people have their favorite. Three that I like are Atom, Sublime Text and VS Code. And out of those three, VS Code is my favorite, but that's just a personal preference. You might like a, a different one. So go and check those out and see what you think. If you want something that goes beyond what a code editor does, the next step up really is called an IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. Now, these are really designed for handling bigger projects and more lines of code. And I think, although they have a lot of features that are helpful, so they will run your code for you, they have uh, advanced debugging features where they can find bugs in your code and testing features, they're very good at that. Uh, and they can do other things like they uh, have version control built into them so they can integrate with things like Git and GitHub. They may not be right for a beginner. They're designed to handle thousands of lines of code and perform other tasks like refactoring where you take production code that works and improve it, but without changing its functionality. That's the hope anyway. So if you're a beginner, maybe stick to a code editor and then move on to an IDE when you have a bit more experience. The other great thing about code editors as well is that you can download extensions for them to increase the amount of things that they're able to do. And by the time you've installed a few different extensions, they can do almost as much as an IDE anyway. So if you're only going to be writing a few lines of code at a time, an IDE might not be the right first step for you. If you'd like to take a closer look at IDEs, then there are four that I would recommend. There's Idle, which is the official Python IDE. Then there's PyCharm, which is probably the most popular Python IDE. Then also Spider, which comes with the Anaconda package too. That's pretty good for data applications. And then finally, take a look at Thony, because that is particularly aimed at beginners. Now, there are a couple of other things I'd like to talk about. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you to today's sponsor, Springboard, and to tell you a little bit about their software engineering career track. It's a nine month online course where you will learn the skills you need and gain the experience that employers are looking for. You'll work one to one with an expert software engineering mentor where you'll create two full stack capstone projects to showcase your skills to potential employers. On top of that, you'll work one-to-one -one with a personal career coach to create a successful job search strategy and build your network in tech, work on your resume and your LinkedIn. You'll also prepare for interviews with mock behavioral interviews and mock technical interviews too. And if you don't get hired in a software engineering role within six months, you'll get a full tuition refund. If that sounds interesting to you, then the link is in the description. There are a couple of other things that I wanted to mention. Let's go outside and talk about them. I almost forgot to mention Jupyter Notebooks. I don't know how because that's what I use most of the time. In a Jupyter Notebook you can put code and rich text and that can be really useful so you can do your data analysis and put things that you want to say put in a presentation in the same notebook and you can share notebooks too so they're really good. It's worth remembering that when it comes to writing and inputting computer programs, we're definitely quite spoiled. 
certainly if you compare us to people in history. For most of the 20th century, people would use punched cards, physical cards with holes punched in them that you would insert into a computer. But what I find most incredible is that system of using cards dates back to the 18th century when it was used by people working in the textile industry to automate looms and loom patterns. That's just extraordinary. Basile Bouchon in 1725 came up with that idea and it was independently created as well by Joseph-Marie Jacquard in 1804. So think of that next time you write some code.